far as this? <laughs> uh, I'm here to present Salmon. Salmon is a project that uh, has started a few years ago in University of Illinois. Uh, the main creator of Salmon is Fred Douglas, and I'm here to present on his behalf. Uh, Fred created this uh, with the help of an undergrad researcher, Wei Peng, and uh, this is uh, supervised under the pr uh, Professor Matt Caesar. Uh, you can see the Salmon Project webpage under here, and the source code for the project is there. After this, I'm going to present the uh, system and how it works. All right. So this is about inter internet censorship. We know that there are governments that block certain traffic, uh, s certain internet traffic, and they block ways to scare the censorship. If they can, we know a government of China or government of Iran or many other countries who block certain websites such as YouTube or Facebook or many other websites that are against them. There are basically two approaches that they take to block the access to the websites. And so the anti uh, censorship usually works in two different ways. The first is to relay traffic to a secret and secure proxy server. And this is how Salmon also works. And the second one is to hide traffic inside something that censor allows. And up to now, there are many, many softwares that implemented their software in the two different ways, but each of them have difficulties, and Salmon tries to uh, find a way around it. So let's review some of the proxy servers. We know the fundamental vulnerability is that users learn prox uh, proxy IP addresses, and sensors can impose as users and learn about the IP, and then they can block that IP. So if we look at the existing uh, proxy systems, such as Tor, Tor is an ad hoc personal distribution of uh, server addresses. But the thing is, the goal for Tor is kind of orthogonal to what we are concerned about. Tor is about privacy. Salmon is about access. We would like to give access to users and as many as we can. And at the same time, we would like to allow traffic such as Skype or video chat or YouTube streaming. There is another network which is called VPN Gate and it has six, over 6,000 servers. VPN Gate, the way it works, it assigns, it has uh, volunteers that give the IP addresses for VPN servers. And VPN Gate mixes those IP addresses with some fake IPs or some innocent IPs. And the way it works is it's the sensor, when it tries to learn, it goes through each of those IP addresses and it can block the VPN ones. And it's shown that with enough uh, users, they can go through all of the IP addresses because it's a list and it's, uh, it's published. They can go through everyone if they put enough manpower and they can block everyone. So we want to avoid that with, with Salmon. There is another approach which is called Great Fire or uh, Siphon. And uh, that they relay traffic to cloud platforms. And sensor, we're assuming that sensor isn't willing to block clouds such as Amazon. But it's proven that some countries, in certain circumstances, they also block all of those web services. So let's see the second approach.
So the cover chains, the way they work, they tunnel IP packets to a protocol that se sensor allows it, such as email or Skype. So the problem with that is the sensor allows those traffic to go, but it has limited bandwidth and it has a long latency, up to 10 seconds latency, so it can't be used for real-time video chat or it can be used for other applications that need uh, faster latency. And they're also vulnerable to fingerprinting. Another approach is decoy routing. And that's the, the friendly ISPs have routers monitoring new uh, TLS connections. And that's uh, the way that they work. They need really big companies to be willing, the big ISPs to be willing to change their, uh, so they send the traffic, they need to change it to something that is, uh, to, it's something that is allowed so it gets to the big ISPs and then it's changed to the traffic that is supposed to be. But up to now, it's been four years since, uh, uh, it's introduced and we don't really see big companies to be willing to do that. And why do a major ISP want to deploy an expensive and complicated system? And in reality, it doesn't work. So what is the solution? That's why we introduced Salmon. In Salmon, each user get a, get a server at a time. Servers are volunteer based and uh, the users, they are assigned to just one IP addresses. So users have trust levels and group based on how much we trust them. User identities are also banned if the servers are blocked by the sensor many, many times. So through these trust levels, we usually look at the servers and we allow everyone to join the system. But the way that we identify the sensors is to see how often a, serv a user was involved in the blockage. And if there are servers that are present where the, the uh, server that they were using, then we block those users. Otherwise, we trust them. So I told you that this is, uh, everyone can join it. So the way that we allow users to, to join the network is that they need to have uh, either a Facebook account, which is old. We ask them to post something on their Facebook page and then make that post public. And if we can see that post, uh, then it's confirmed that the user is in control of that account so they can register. Or they can get recommended by a trusted Salmon user. So this, is, this allows everyone to join if they are a real person or they have friends who use it. So let's see how Salmon uh, server distribution is. Uh, we have a central directory uh, server that talks, yes. Yeah, because uh, Facebook is really popular nowadays, and if they can register, they can register with their face, Facebook account, and every, we assume that everyone has a Facebook. Uh, sorry about yes. the, the the yeah, it's possible. We can't control that, but we learn about uh, users' behavior as they use the system, and we put so everyone who joins is at trust level zero. And trust levels are from, they're discrete values, and they're from minus three up to six. Six is the highly trusted users that gives the highest bandwidth, best server. And minus three are the users that we would, we would block. But the, when they join the network, they're at trust level zero. If they get recommendation codes from their friends, they can join, a, level which is lower than their friends, but it's possible for everyone to join because that's our goal. So 
the way that salmon works is as salmon clients uh, communicate they, they communicate uh, with server via email and uh, the email address is the username that's how they get connected so assume that the left is the uh, sensor countries and we have user No, HTTP one or some general one. No, it's general one. We have proxies, the salmon VPN servers, which are the people who volunteer to be a server. And then the salmon central directory, it's in control of what users should be assigned to what server. It's people who care about internet freedom. So they don't gain anything, it's all free, and it's all open source. So we would like people to use it. But the problem with VPN server, if, if you know someone, there are, there are companies who offer VPN services to people who are in censored country and they charge them. The main problem is they're secure as long as the censor doesn't know about their IP address. But when they're known, they block their IP addresses. Salmon tries to go around this. Salmon, it distributes the IP addresses, but it gives IP addresses to the trusted servers, to trusted users. Uh, the, uh, the Salmon central directory keeps the logs. Yes, it's, it's, yes, uh, we're using soft ether VPN service, which is uh, developed in Japan, and that's, that's proved to be working. <laughs> All right, uh, so, yes. Yes, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> there, there is another way which is the recommendation base. So if they know someone who used this, they can use it. Yep. So for accessing Facebook, there are other ways around it and it's pro like people in Iran use Facebook a lot and there, there are proxy servers that allows it. But the main problem with them is they don't allow higher bandwidth. You can't really use YouTube. So Salmon allows it to, to stream videos. So I talked about trust level. So let's see how our trust level works. We know that each new user, they can join the network. And when they join, we assign them to trust level zero. And tr as we trust them more, their trust level goes up. So there are two ways for them to improve their trust level. First is to behave well. As long as the server is not blocked and the users are using it, we, we are good and we, we improve their trust levels by time. So a user advances to level one after two days, to level two after four days, to level three after eight days, and to level six after two to the six days. Right. Sorry, yes. That, if, if, uh, if, if there's, so we assign them an IP address. We, we like that IP address to be working. So if that IP address gets blocked, that means that a sensor is part of the network and they're, they're part of the users. So we want to identify them. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it depends. Uh, so this, the server, the users would have a, uh, the same access as the uh, server. So the people who run the server, we assume that they are in free countries, either uh, in Europe, America, or here, that they have free internet, and the users would have the same access level. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the thing, uh, we, uh, <laughs> so uh, Samud has, uh, like, uh, when you install Samud, it says that it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to uh, be with the U.S. law. So as long as they behave within the U.S. law, they're fine. Otherwise, the server, the s server director is willing to cooperate with the government, the U.S. government or any go other governments in free countries to trace back those users who misbehaved. And it's written in the seven. Yes, it is. So servers can, uh, users can get uh, to the higher trust levels with time as they behave well or with their recommendation code. And depending on what level they're in, they can recommend their friends more often. So the highest trust levels, which is level six, they can recommend once per day. The creator of Salmon also gave some recommendation codes to his highly trusted friends that they can, they are higher level than level six, so they can recommend more than that. But he, <laughs> like, his basic is from minus three to six. And the way that he assigns the uh, users to server, he allows to at most 10 users per server. So let's see what happens when a sensor or a government agent becomes a member in Salmon and they start blocking IP addresses. So users, we trust users as long as they behave well. And by that, we mean that their server still is working. So users get banned if three servers that they have been assigned to get blocked. So each, each user, each time a server is blocked, they request a new IP address and we assign them to a new one. And if the same user is present within the three instances of the blockage, we ban those users. Uh, it's more likely for the government agent to be not patient and then they block it, but we, 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 we assume that uh, we assume that this uh, this is uh, this is a, like in probability we assume that it's a uniform probability over the ten users who were using this IP addresses. So we can't really say which one was the government agent. But if three of these events happen consecutively, we assume that 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 was an agent. So let's see how they can, I already explained this one, but I'll go through it again. The registration is through trust levels plus uh, the manning uh, protect. Uh, so we want, uh, ideally, uh, we would like each person to have only one account, right? And we would like the Facebook account to be an old account, which is like, the government agents can go and create many, many Facebook identities. So we require an old account so it, uh, it looks like a real person. And yes, yes, they can. <laughs> there is also another vulnerability for Salmon. If the government decides to run a server, then we can't protect our users if the government decides to volunteer their own free servers. Th then that's a that's a different problem. But we assume that many many servers that we're running they are in free countries. So 
we let the highly trusted users to bring their friends in, uh, and we put we put them to get better trust levels. So if we so the salmon tries to find the connected components and it assigns the same connected component to the same users. This way, we protect most of our users. So if a government agent behaves really well and it gets to really highly trusted ones, we would and he can recommend more, we would like them to be assigned to the same set of servers, not, not to expose many, many of our users. And many, many of our VPNs still work even if we have a highly trusted government agent. All right, that was <laughs> the end of the <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem that Salon can't solve. So the government can go after people by giving them free servers, and we can protect them against that attack. So up to now, uh, Fritz has been uh, talking to people who wanted to volunteer in, on Skype. And I presented this here hoping that there are people who care about internet freedom uh, in Yerevan, and they're willing to volunteer via server. His client is also in Persian, translated in Persian and also in Chinese. So the Chinese users and also the Iranian users can use it in their own language. Yes. Uh, uh. Uh, you just need the computer. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. No, we we allowed our servers to be offline too, so it's possible for the servers to just volunteer a few hours a day, and we identify those servers and assign them to our users. Uh, okay, sorry. So uh, one question again regarding the trust and the, the problem mm -hmm. of if the government decides to hack it and so on. So if I gave you my credentials, uh, for example, the Facebook information and so on, how can I have the trust that later that will be not stolen? And is there another way to store? Why I cannot, for example, register there as an anonymous user? And later, maybe you can again ban me based on that, but based on my behavior. But uh, why should I gi give you my credentials? Well, it's not required. We just need to see the post that, so upon registration, you tell Salmon that you're going to post something on your Facebook account. And you tell them your Facebook account. But after registration, it doesn't require your Facebook to be present. You can just make it private again. Okay. No, it's just upon registration. You, we need email addresses. Just, it's not clear why to post on the Facebook. For example, can't I answer by email or confirm my registration by email? If in any case you save the email. No, it's uh, now it's just implemented with Facebook or a recommend. So if you have a friend who is part of a salmon, you can get a recommendation code. That's another way. But Facebook, we. We thought that Facebook's, uh, like, if you post a, something on your Facebook account, that means that you own that account and you have access to it. Yeah, we don't, we don't allow new Facebook accounts to join them. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. And as long as you behave well, you can use free internet <laughs> as a government agent. 
And we won't block all government agents who wants to use free internet. We block those who block our servers. Salmon creators. It's a group in uh, University of Illinois. They all work on internet uh, censorship to convention. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. And, and please volunteer if you can. <laughs>